Hello and welcome to The Fostering Diaries. My name is Sarah and I am a solo foster carer in the UK. I have been fostering for how many, maybe five or so years now and I'm a short-term carer, which means that children come to me quite often on emergencies and they can stay with me for you know, a weekend, a week, six months, 18 months, however long it is until decisions are made for them in terms of you know where they're gonna where they're going to go, whether it may be back home, whether for adoption, various different ways it can go depending upon the case, of course. If you've been following along with the last couple of videos, you'll kind of know what's been going on. But if you haven't, let me just bring you up to date that for the last six months, I have had a sibling group of three with me and I no longer have a sibling group of three with me. They left yesterday i'm actually sat in one of their bedrooms now you can see empty shelves behind me um i just came up i don't think i'm gonna cry in this video but i, I think i've cried in the last two i may cry we'll see how it goes <laughs> we'll see what happens but i just came up to oh, i'm gonna cry <laughs> to like strip the beds and things and you know hoover up just like the rooms just look so bare and weird like all the personality of the children has obviously just been taken out of it and it's just an um, empty bed and empty shelves and not empty drawers i should say because they did actually leave some clothes that didn't fit them anymore and things behind that is something i've got to sort, sort out and like school uniform that they're they don't need their school uniform anymore so i need collecting all that together to donate uh, back to the school the school has this wonderful little like shop in the reception area where you can go and buy the t-shirts and things for like a pound so i'm gonna sort all them out and donate them back to the school but yeah they left they left yesterday the whole bridging process went really smoothly and really good i'm obviously not going to talk about the situation and where they've gone and what's happened that's sort of private to them and you know their family and everything and everyone else involved but just to say it was all really positive um i've talked in the other videos yes there was lots of tears throughout the bridging it was a new experience for me as a foster carer having slightly older children i normally sit in the range of sort of like naught to fives and um the children were slightly older well two of them were in that age range but then one of them was slightly older and they definitely had a lot more understanding than I'm I've dealt with before with other children and so um it was just it was a new experience to me the the questions that they asked and how we sort of handled that and talked through things together I think I'm really pleased and proud of how I handled it and I hope that the children felt uh, really supported from me throughout that time because I definitely tried to put you know a lot of energy and effort into um, listening to them and how they you know how they felt about what was going on and reassuring them but also allowing them you know to be sad and we talked about and we talked a lot about being confused and anxious for the future and we also talked about you know being happy for the future and what's going to come so I think that I hope like I say, I hope that they felt um, comforted and supported through the bridging time. I have done the same as I always do when a child or children leave me. I've left it completely open and up to them, the, wherever they've gone, about keeping in touch. I you know, definitely say that I'm willing to keep in touch with them and the children. I think it's really important if you can keep in touch and it can be in so many different ways it can be you know you can do meetups you can phone calls just um photos backwards and forwards it could be letters it could be like just sending a christmas present or a birthday present there can be so many different ways of keeping in touch with people and yeah i'm always absolutely willing to do that if the other party want to i have got a lot of videos on the channel about children leaving and maybe offering different pieces of advice and things so i'll put the playlist up above and down below i have i think it's placement endings playlist if you want to go ahead and watch some more placement ending videos and if you do have any questions about placement endings 
uh, do go ahead and leave them down below in the comments and I will get back to you. In terms of for me now, it, right now I'm gonna <laughs> sort out these bedrooms, like I say, and sort out the bits of clothes and stuff that they did leave behind. And then I think I'm having a little break from fostering. I have pretty much fostered continuously since I started fostering like five years ago or so. Like I've had an odd bit of time off, like a week here, maybe a couple of weeks, but maybe not a couple of weeks. I don't know, but it feels like I've pretty much fostered straight through and not had any sort of real, real break from it. And I'm definitely feeling that I need <laughs> the break from it. I'm hoping that it's gonna work out well in terms of we're getting major house renovations. So I'm hoping that we can start these renovations now because I have talked to my social worker about the renovations and how that will work with fostering. And in all honesty, what my plan is with the renovations is for us to move out and more so like the work can be done quicker I don't really know much about house renovations, but I'm assuming if we're not here in the way, the work can get done quicker. So the plan is for me and Stephen, my son, to move out. Obviously, I won't be able to foster during that time. Um, of course, finances will be an issue for me if I'm not fostering. I do earn money from fostering, and so we'll just have to see how it goes. I've, like I said, I've spoken to my social worker, and this work that's going on, if we are living in the house, maybe we can move out for a little bit of time, we move back in and if it they will just have to come round if i decide that i want to see if i can take a child whilst the works are going on it's not like a definite no no that i can't do it it would more just be that someone needs to come around and obviously check sort of health and safety aspects that you know is it do they deem it safe enough for um for a child to be placed with me depending on you know where what stage we are in the works or whatever we will just have to see uh, but like I say, fingers crossed, the work's going to start pretty soon. It feels like we've been waiting for it for a very long, long time. And then other than that, I am just going to relax and enjoy this time. It's Being a solo foster carer is really difficult. As it, you know, being a single, a single mum, I've been a single mum to my son more or less since he was born. And um, it's difficult having to, you know, manage and do everything on your own takes it out of you and it's really really hard it's hard emotionally it's hard logistically it's just really difficult and so I'm definitely gonna enjoy like my son's 17 and so he doesn't kind of need me so much but my my plan is that I'm gonna maybe have some lions I can't remember when <laughs> when I've had some lions I do like getting up early but I think I'm gonna enjoy some lions and I'm gonna go on some hikes and I'm gonna spend time with my son without you know little children around hopefully it's gonna be nice weather we can maybe do like some beach days we can go up to the lakes go out in the van and just do the more spontaneous things that I absolutely love that you just can't do when when you're a foster care and you've got children uh, we will be going on a holiday I think uh, we've settled on um well Italy for now we're gonna do a bit of a bit of a thing around Italy well not around Italy like Rome and Mount Vesuvius and Naples and the Malfi Coast is the plan if you want to see that actually on my other channel Green on Adventure I'll link that down below you can check out the videos for that but that's the plan for the summer we're also planning on Iceland as well <laughs> we like we haven't done any traveling and I love traveling and we haven't done anything for really since I started fostering, like, not really, which, I mean, maybe we have, but I don't know, anyway, we're planning on maybe, like, a, an Iceland trip for Stephen's 18th birthday in December as well, which, maybe, I mean, I can't, I don't know, who knows what will happen in terms of the house, having foster children, no real idea at all what the next couple of months is gonna look like in terms of finances i know a lot of people do ask me about well you know if you're not fostering what do you do uh, obviously i earn little bits of money through my online stuff so i have like some youtube channels 
um, I have Etsy stores, it'll all be linked down below, uh, Etsy stores where I sell, I need to, I'll probably end up working a little bit on my Etsy stores and try to build up some of the products in there to see if I can earn a little bit of extra money. If you want to support the channel, go ahead to my Etsy stores, um, it'll be linked down below like I say, and I also have a Patreon where quite a few of you um, support me financially that way so if you do want to do that that would be that would be fantastic so i do earn little bits of money through those things but then also when i have children i'm very careful and conscious of the fact that i may not always have children especially when i have three children like that's my ideal to me i'd rather have like i'm i'm registered for three and i would rather have three children rather than one i feel like if i'm doing it i may as well be doing it and I'm very careful with putting like a certain percentage away each time I get paid and so I've built up a good chunk of money that I can like dip into when I don't have children so that is how I manage the financial situation very like when I am earning the money I'm very conscious and, about, and this time even more so I've been I've kind of put more percentage away because I knew that or hoped that, and I'm still hoping that the the works on the house get completed so it could be that actually I can't foster for a good few months and I will need money obviously to live off so so yeah if you do want to support the channel in any way financially those links are all down below so right now I'm gonna get on finish these bedrooms get them all straightened out wash the sheets and then I'm just gonna enjoy my wonderful hopefully sunny relaxing summer um if you have any topics that you would like me to talk about because i'd still like to make videos for the channel over the summer so if you have any topics that you'd particularly like me to make videos on and talk about let me know them down below in the comments and uh, yeah enjoy your summer and hopefully i will see you very soon bye bye